first ever Beyond the Vibe Halloween special, we're joined by Scott Taylor of Mason Hill. First grew up on, I was the, probably one of the last kids to have tapes. So I remember getting the Jimi Hendrix experience on tape. That was my first kind of introduction to music. It wasn't, you know, whatever was on the TV or radio at the time. And it's just me, the guys and the audience. And that's it. So that's the only, so the only two options I've got is to jam with the bands and be like this on the stage or to look every single person in the eye. And we got to that song and people just started jumping. And we're like, oh. So then we started jumping. Okay. We didn't start it. And we were like, and then I realized how hard it is to sing and jump. I figured it out now. I figured it out now. You've just got to like, for me, you've got to keep contact of the microphone to your nose. So you're not, sh if you're like this, you're like shaking about, that's a bad still. That's a bad. <laughs> right, I'll just saying that. He'll save that. I'll be waiting with my phone. <laughs> Beyond the Vibe, the show that cuts deep into the world of music. My name is Aaron Day, the guitarist of the UK band These Wicked Rivers, and I'm here with the man holding the microphone to my face, music videographer and photographer, is Mr. Ryan Vasey. It is. <laughs> we're, we're a mic down, but we're still going. Um, you know, on. Yes, yeah, so we had our own type of horror <laughs> for Halloween this time. Because, uh, yeah, we have temperamental mics, but we charge forward. As we always do. I mean, that's it. We ask, it's, a, it's a trick. It's a trick. Because trick or treat Halloween. Of course. Context. <laughs> yes. Um, we were pondering, because it's Halloween, um, scary, scary things. Uh, you know, like like what what can we think of that that was scary that we could tie in? So I I initially thought Black Sabbath. <laughs> you know, Black, Black Sabbath's album cover for the first album is terrifying, and it still is. It looks terrifying. I mean, I always think with Sabbath. Imagine hearing the song Black Sabbath in 1970. I mean, imagine how terrifying that must have been. And then when my dad talks about because I always used to be terrified of Slipknot. Like when I first used to see him on Kerrang, you know, you'd watch some of them videos, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a nice lad, you know what I mean? You just get the shit out of me. And my dad said that he was the same when he first put Master of Puppets on the record player, like by Metallica, because it was so heavy and they'd never heard anything like it. It was, it was, that was scary to him, you know. And now look at where we are now, you know, we have some right heavy bands, don't we? Yes, I mean, it, it was interesting. The thing that I always remember when you spoke about that was uh, there was this Black Sabbath documentary. And uh, Tony Iommi spoke about when they first struck up and started playing the song Black Sabbath. Um, there was women that, that started screaming and running out of the building because it was like something completely different. So it, but it's strange to think because it's like, well, now that's like, you know, they're not, I mean, you've got more, it's way more extreme bands than that. Of course, we had Cradle of Filth at one point on the show. Um, you know, it's. I've got a good scary story to do with Sabbath. Right, in the early days, um, Geezer, because they asked Geezer if he ever messed with the occult and stuff, and I think naturally that it was around that scene, and Geezer said he used to have an upside down cross at the end of his bed, right, as you do, and um, and he remembers, before he wrote, he wrote the song Black Sabbath because he woke up in the middle of the night and saw a dark figure at the end of his bed mm -hmm. reaching out to him, and that's the whole sort of like, what is this that stands before me? from the song um so yeah scary, scary story number one i mean i think it's scary stuff i think it's saint anger that's pretty scary in it um the last few albums with ozzy with sabbath they were pretty scary um i'm mainly just thinking of shit albums really that yes I, I think for me saint anger could take that because of that snare yes <laughs> you know i often wake up at night in horror because of the snare. Don't blame me. I mean, on a more positive note, less scary, uh, this week we've got Mason Hill. Yes, we do. Um, it was a great chat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah oh, I love Scott, man. I think he's I think he's a legend of the scene. And Mason Hill, on that level with Wagons, where it's, it feels like they're very much a fan band, you know, the, the, when we get into it in the interview, because it was such a, uh, quite a large amount of time between kind of when they came, up, came onto the scene and the release of their debut album, The Top 20 debut album um we kind of get into how the fans supported them through that time and how they were basically selling an ep for sort of five years and how it was important that they really spent time with it to make it the awesome album it was which i thought was really interesting yes and uh, you can hear all about that now so we're here with scott taylor lead singer of mason hill thanks for joining us brother mm. thank you so much for having me it's a, it is a pleasure 
<laughs> cool. as well. <laughs> um, so on this show, where uh, we like to take a look at musicians' origins. Um, so with that in mind, when was the first time you remember hearing music and thinking like, "This is what I want to do"? Was did you have like a moment? Um, yeah, kind of. I, I first grew up on I was the, well, probably one of the last kids to have tapes, so I remember getting the Jimi Hendrix experience on tape. That was my first kind of introduction to music. It wasn't, you know, whatever was on the TV or radio at the time. And then, um, you know, I started playing guitar very badly, and then and then quickly met James because we met in a music class in second year of high school. That wow. probably I probably got Jimi Hendrix stuff in like first year. That was probably mm-hmm. what maybe eleven or something. So yeah, it wasn't actually that kind of after and then James had done like stuff. Like he's he he had a weird start where he was quite young and actually got like quite big and endorsed and all that stuff and then wow. moved up to Scotland and basically started from zero again. Mm. So he, he was, yeah, he was kind of, uh, we, we gelled very well and he was quite very good in the guitar. So then I just started playing with him more and it, I'd never really seen it as anything special or or, or something to kind of hold on to. But when we got to maybe third year together, it got to the stage where there was no singers around and my experience up until that point had been singing in the shower and shit like that, like proper just <laughs> just stupid stuff and like probably like really embarrassing pop songs and shit. But for some reason I tried it and I, <clears throat> I wasn't very good, but I was better than James. <laughs> that was the sort of bed, like what we, we say, like one of us need to sing. So whoever's better sings and I, I was better than James and we were both very bad at that time. Um, <laughs> And then that was that was kind of it for there because we were in a band called like Between the Fist or something like something really cheesy, and then it was Black Velvet, which oh, James okay. chose the name. Yeah, mm-hmm. James chose that name. And then oh, and then of course Mason Hill, and and then here we are. Here we are. And yeah, old yeah. old men. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting, Scott, because we have this regularly on the vibe where singers seem to they either flourish and they've gone through you know kind of school choirs and all that kind of thing or there's the route that you've taken where it's kind of like it's a pressured thing and i always think it's interesting for fans of bands because someone like yourself i've always seen when we've gigged with rivers and stuff like you just seem like such a natural front man and mm. such a natural vocalist you know, you've got such a strong voice and presence about your man so it's always weird when you hear these stories and, <laughs> and it wasn't like that natural thing like how long did it take you to kind of fall into that that role where it started to feel more natural a long time a long time because I, I was very, I was a very shy person and I, to be fair to this day I still am I uh, like I cower away from crowds of, of rooms it's, it's a weird weird job I have for the type of person I have um and it's it just I had to first off my first problem when I started was I was still playing the guitar mm. so I would use that as my coping mechanism to do a show mm. and I'd, I'd have my guitar and I would just sing and I'd sing at the mic like this and I'd look at the crowd sometimes and go hi <laughs> and I'd, I'd be me and then it got to the point where Mason Hill was getting to a good point beyond my guitar level level skills basically james was writing stuff that i, I just couldn't perform because um, i wasn't very good honestly so once mark came in and replaced me in that aspect i was i was the scared man do you know what i mean I, I i okay i just had the microphone i just had this for a while i had a stand and then so i would sort of use that to then be a coping so then and then i'd be like i'd, I'd go like 70s you know, well, the, the sh- and sometimes I didn't yeah. even have the half. I had like the queen half stands for a while as well. Like, I mean, <laughs> the, because I needed something. And, you know, like you look at some of these front men, you know, that they just know how to command and they know how to gain the respect of not only the people that bought the tickets, but the 50, not 50%, but maybe 30% of the audience that has been dragged along by their significant other or their partner. And they can even get them on board. And that's the hard people to get on board that show. And I was like, no, I just got to kind of chance it. So I got rid of the mic stand. That was like my last frontier because that is me. I now can no longer hide behind anything. Hmm. And it's just me, the guys, and the audience, and that's it. So that's the only so the only two options I've got is to jam with the bands and be like this on the stage, 
or to look every single person in the eye, you know, mm -hmm. capture every camera shot, you know, have these wee little hundred moments during a show where I'm, you know, I see someone from the past and you have that wee minute of acknowledgement and stuff like that. And, <laughs> and then just work in that voice where like my normal voice is like this, but then when I get on stage, we need to project and we need to be there and we need to make sure that the last row can hear us and you know all that stuff it's we have practice i've watched a lot of really weird youtube videos for like motive <laughs> for motivational shit and all this <laughs> to just try and be able to walk out in that stage and whether there's one person or a million people provide the same experience that i can to like the best of my ability we're doing all right, but you know, it's still I'm still the same person that's notices every mistake I make. Get you know, I notice if I, if I go to get the crowd to sing something and they don't do it, I kind of shit. I go, oh no, you know. <laughs> so you have you have all that kind of stuff as well. It's just getting over it, right? It's getting over your mind. Mate, it makes you a better performer, though, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I think if you the people that have kind of rested on the lowers and it's very much like this is the best I can be you know the, you're never going to grow as a person because as time goes on the more experiences you have the more you'll grow and take things from you know and the latter of them two examples is how I kind of see you as a front man it's got you know is that capturing people and that kind of intensity you know so sometimes it's that liberation in it when you kind of throw yourself into the fires and let go of everything that's when you kind of unlock your your true potential you know and it sounds like you're yeah. kind of in that, in that place right now we've got the kind of the formation of Mason Hill down as 2013 so is that is that right or is it probably that? i mean it's it was a weird one because we were in black velvet we entered into a, a competition that was a four-piece band with another bassist and drummer we got to the finals of that thing and then lost awfully like we we were in a battle of the bands and and we we won scotland and then we went to do like the euro part of the competition and we came dead last it was it was bad it was oh, yeah. it was one of those ones well it was because we walked out to 20 and by the way there was 28 contestants <laughs> we came we came last oh. that's that that's what every musician needs growing up do you know what i mean mm. and um but no, we walked out and these competitors were like where we are now, you know, the, yeah. it's not, not that they were amazing. It was just that they knew exactly what they were doing and they were well rehearsed and they just had years of experience and, and playing shows as well. And then we, we got our arses kicked. <laughs> and then at that point, it was just me and James. So we made the demos, three songs. I think even Broken Sun was on there at that point. That's how old some of these songs can be. And then it was like a two year to three year sort of search for the band, you know, to find yeah. these guys. To then as We were a four piece for quite a while. And then Mark came in eventually. And God knows when Mark came in. When did Mark come in? We won't test you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 if you go from like 2013, like you say, sort of demo. Yeah, game, it to must where, be. To where you are now. Mm. Is, looking back, is there a pivotal moment when you can remember thinking, like, this is, this is going to be good, or this is suddenly changing and becoming something else? Literally in the last six months. It's been yeah. uh, up until now. It's been quite a tumultuous. Uh, no, I'm not. Don't attempt words you can't say, Scott. <laughs> it's been quite. Let's go back to back to Glasgow. It's, it's more. We have more more of a shit run. To be fair, and we've had some amazing amazing fans throughout the years that have mm. kept us going because we 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 sold a, an EP for five bloody years. Like <laughs> like we we've played that to death like just like seriously because there was just a lot of shit going on and we went through legal trouble and getting getting to the stage where like the album get ready it's been quite a uh, rough journey with small highlights you know like mm. there's been certain we get lucky with shows but basically fans kind of kept us going through word of mouth because no content was coming out for years mm. like it's a testament years. yeah it's a testament to the community that you boys were able to build around the band and the community itself like you say you know that you were able to get through that yeah. period you know and i suppose that anticipation has probably helped the past six months it, as well you know it has well that's what's finally kind of noticed because uh, we went at covid hit and we went away into our rooms 
we we've, we got this album out to the world. We didn't. We just saw the reactions on social media and Facebook and stuff like that, and getting to go out on the tour and seeing just how much the kind of band has grown. That is, we're now sort of in that sort of weird feeling where we're like, holy shit, right? <laughs> More people have came. This seems to be good. If we if we keep on this tra- trajectory, then you know we could actually be looking at, at, at just just being able to have that sort of basic basic financial life, hopefully sorted. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, you, you don't we don't you don't need to live like kings, but if you can make minimum wage doing this for a living, how fucking cool would that be, right? Winning, man. You know, you've cheated. Like, you've cheated. That's it, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's the dream. So it's like, it was it sort of gave us a wee bit of a taste like that because, like, you know, we've we done a tour before COVID and, man, we, we could have played to maybe two, three hundred people. We played to thousands. Like, the, the COVID has helped us so much. I know it's been an awful time for the world, but, you know, mm. and for everyone else and, I, and my heart goes out to everyone, but, in a way, it was really sort of kind of the way this sort of advertisement sort of campaign that's went on the last sort of kind of half years and beyond is is truly kind of changed our musical life. It's weird. Mm. It's, it's so weird. We're so bloody humbled, but it's weird to think about it. No, it's amazing. <laughs> um, so with the debut album, uh, Against the Wall, um, when you had that collection of songs decided and you walked into the studio, did you have like a certain vibe that you wanted to achieve? And, and if so, like, how did you how did you go about it? Particularly during COVID, mm. um, in such a difficult time. Yeah, well, it was kind of put into the whole recording process was in two parts. The band recorded Riverside and Glasgow and I didn't. And the vibe there was to try and get as much of the recordings that you hear of, as the guys playing together mm. as, a, as opposed to not playing together which I, th- I think is quite cool to be honest so you know a bit of trial and error you know if one person makes a mistake and stuff like that but you know they got through it the guys and it was a sort of more of a feel like say, try and create a weird sort of kind of mismatch between modern and classic mm. because we're not completely classic but we're not completely modern yeah you know, where it's, it's so trying to sort of get the instruments to be like the depth of the part of the past but with the modern sound of the future mm. weirdly um <laughs> and then like vocally recording me i done it in new york with brian sperber who had done like it done miles kennedy and shit and i Amazing, was man. Yeah, it was. I, I, I didn't expect that to come through, but we'd be working with him for a couple of years on a songwriting level, and um, he just wanted to. We just got it done. So anyway, I was absolutely terrified doing that process, as you can imagine, because I'm like <laughs> just this kind of fucking nobody, and I'm like, oh god. And I just kind of got retaught how to sing over there, and mm-hmm. we brought we brought all the keys down because I was singing very high and very up there, and. Not very good for maintaining like what I can do. So we adjusted the keys. We found where I was. We adjusted a lot of the melodies to kind of be more in these lower ends of my voice. Found a new way to sing. Like so, I kind of sing like this now, which is weird. <laughs> but if I'm recording, like it, it gets it, it just kind of disconnects the nose and takes away that nasal sound that mm. that you can have, and it gets a more kind of deep sounding. Weird, weird shit, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't think about it. Um, but the approach for that was for the vocals was basically just get it as damn good as possible and just mm. do improve what I what we had already done to the max and yeah. just see what happens. And um, you know, we recorded loads of vocals and harmonies and triple tracked everything, and it was stupidly intensive and. It was like 13 days non-stop, but it, 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 we think it came out very well. We're really yeah. happy. Mm-hmm. We're really happy. Well, like, uh, it's, it's like because it's been such a like a, a anticipation and a wait for the, for the debut album. You know, you want to make you want to make sure that you're giving it all the energy and all the time that it deserves for that point. You yeah. know, and like you say, giving back to the community. You know, of, of, that have kept you going for that for so long. And I think the album comes across really well for, the, for that sense of quality, man. For those that don't know, I mean, you touched on it a little bit, kind of going over the story of Mason Hill up to where we are now. Um, why why did it take so long to, to to bring out the album? Like, if you don't mind me asking, like, was yeah at a point when you were ready for it and different factors come in because we felt the same thing in Rivers, you know? Mm. Yeah. 
so we'd we'd signed a deal to a label and it just didn't work out basically it, oh, but get but that was a long process of getting out and kind of stalled us for a wee bit and then just as we'd kind of got on our feet covid and yeah. that then that delayed it for another approximately 12 months or something like that so what probably should have came out let's say 2018 or something came out in 2021 but you know what it had been shit <laughs> it really would have been and i'm and i'm so thankful ah oh god honestly i'm so thankful that it did take this long because the changes that happened in the last 10 percent of that journey amounted for an 80 percent increase in mm -hmm. how well it was like it was all came in the end when the team was starting to assemble around us you know we had new management and just more kind of just more structured, it, everything just flowed better and got to the point so quick. So if it came out in 2018, we never have got number 19. Yeah. Never got that in a million years. And it's it's a nice kind of, it's a good stepping stone, you know, it's kind of made a mark on the country and like... Yeah, yeah definitely, man. So thank, thank fuck, to be honest. <laughs> it's amazing, it's like you talked about COVID, it's weird how things work out, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, I'm just so happy for you and the boys the way that it has done, because you definitely deserve it just for getting through them years, man, you know, and for the fans as well. Mm. Oh, thank you, and the fans especially, I mean, they funded the bloody album. It's on a Kickstarter, which was the hardest decision we ever had to do. And a month before we decided to do the Kickstarter, we were like, we need this amount of money to make the album or we need to quit. And we were like, do we do the crowdfund? And do we do not do we not do it? Because we all hate crowdfunds personally. It's it's a 50-50 opinion. Oh, you can have have whatever you want. Yeah. Me personally, we were like, I do not want to do this, but it was either that or patch the whole thing completely and get rid of the bands at that point. So thank God we done it. And mm. we asked for a certain amount and the f our fans came out and doubled it and we were like jesus we're just like holy crap thank you and that was that was that's what got us to the level where we could do that so it's yeah it's literally where a fan made band and we we won't ever forget that like that's that's literally a fan made band yeah. mm. <laughs> awesome man <laughs> um when it comes to Amazing. giving that material when it comes to gigging that material off uh, against the wall, is there like any s tracks in particular that you, you like, really enjoy playing? Like something you look forward to? Yeah, Against the Wall is now, is now the track I look forward to playing. It's great because people start jumping now. <laughs> people never jumped. So people never jumped for us, for our music. We would get the, the statutory like chicken nods yeah. where you're just like, we're fans going that. like that. I'm a yeah. veteran on the chicken nod. Yeah. Yeah, right. It's, it's, a, it's very easy. P any people of all ages can do it. It's yeah. just you keep going. <laughs> and, and, you know, we started this tour. Our first stop was Aberdeen, top of Scotland. And we got to that song and people just started jumping. And we're like, oh. So then we started jumping. Yeah. We didn't start it. And we were like, and then I realized how hard it is to sing and jump. I've, I figured it out now. I figured it out now. You've just got to like, for me, you've got to keep contact of the microphone to your nose. So you're not, sh <laughs> if you're like this, you're like shaking about. And that's a bad still. That's a bad. <laughs> right. I'll just seen that. He'll save that. I'll be waiting with my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, and then every other show, the tour, more people started jumping, probably because we started jumping first, like, you know, as, as human beings, we are one to mirror people. That is the biggest thing that we do in the world is we can't help it, but we mimic. It's an amazing feeling though, and it's got when, when, you, when you're not expecting it at a gig, and then it happens, <laughs> and you naturally, like you say, that it just, you can't help it, it's an impulse to mirror it. And there's that amazing moment when, as they used to say, as a band, if everyone's doing it, it's like, this, so we're jumping now everyone's that's what jumping we're doing now. Now. this is what's happening right <laughs> yeah. now everyone is jumping so there's mob mentality and it can happen the other way you know if you have a mm. crowd that's not really into it that one person that maybe would jump doesn't want to jump yeah. you know so you got to just try and that's why we always just try and give out so much energy as well to some positive vibes do you know what i mean mm. get people you know they've paid to they've paid to have a good night you know so like let's make let's try our damn best to make sure it's a good night even if we're not having a good night we make sure they are 
Yeah, man. Now, obviously, you mentioned it a little bit um, in terms of the amazing reaction. How has the tour been with uh, the Hollister and the Empire boys? Mm. Insane. Actually, insane. First off, Empire and Hollister were awesome. Yeah. They were, they were really good. Uh, my first time with Empire, they were really fucking good. I didn't, I, I, I just didn't know, how, I didn't know them. <laughs> So, I, you know, like you just, I don't assume every band that I don't know is amazing. Do you know what I mean? I just assume they're, they're going to be all right. And then you actually get to it. And yeah, they were actually amazing. So well done to those guys. And they, you know, they've done, a, they've done an amazing job. They had the hardest job, I think, which is on the tour, is to open the show. Mm. Um, which is always a challenge, no matter who you do it for. And, and they fucking nailed it. I'm very, very happy to meet them. And Hollowstar nailed it. Fucking Hollowstar, Hollowstar. Like, you know they're going to nail it. So there was yeah. no worries about that. Um, and it was just nice to hang out with them again, you know, as kind of limited as it was because it's all COVID stuff. Mm. Mm. But it was amazing, you know. It was... It was... Uh, we felt like we were in a real band for two weeks, you know. It was that sort of feeling. Like, we would just keep going to places and there was people... <laughs> And we'd get the ticket update in the day and it'd be like 50% over the last one. That was like, whatever happened in the last two weeks, advertisement or word of mouth, thank you everyone, because it was insane. <laughs> like, honestly, some places were just doubling and we were like, what is happening here? And we just got to do so many fucking amazing shows. And like, I can't, we can't go over it. We cannot go over it. It was, it was a very cathartic for... You know, try being in this game for how old am I now? I'm 28. That probably, you know, 15 years. 15 years, you know? Mm. You don't realize how long you, you do this for in the hope of going up and down the country and there being people there to listen to you shout. And uh, mm. if the, finally there was people there to listen to me shout and for the other guys to dance about on stage. Awesome, Amazing. Man. Yeah, I look killer. It's awesome. <laughs> um, now for the next question, we like to throw some kind of weird questions at artists. <laughs> um, so for Mason Hill's next album, you've been yes. told that you have to do another genre. What would that oh. genre be? You've got complete control, Scott. Mm. It's oh. all yours, man. <laughs> yeah, you can piss off the boys. You can do whatever you want to do. the power. <laughs> I would... I would say that Mason Hill synth boy band pop. Yes. Wow. That was what we wanted as well. <laughs> I mean, that, that was my logical choice. Yeah. Sort of yeah. <laughs> just makes sense, doesn't it? Is Five some... singers. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Full Five suits, singer. white suits. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We don't need the bands. Just everyone starts being a singer and then we just <laughs> see where, see what the one would want. I always Think knew that you had that in you as well, Matt. And I always knew that was... Oh, that yeah. Was breaking to come out yeah and i'm glad oh, yeah. we, we've all accepted that here yeah. i mean we could go barbershop quartet <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know I mean, yeah. maybe do that for one night of the tour just yeah. throw a spatter in there yeah. you know i mean imagine that next next tour like everyone's like oh, i saw mason hill yeah. oh, it's amazing i can't wait to see him again there was jumping on the last tour yeah. can't wait to see it you come out and you're all standing with your back <laughs> in the crowd and then the synth comes in and then you all turn around i mean it's just gonna be even better isn't it? it's gonna be more uh... jumping it would, there would be, I think. I'd be, I'd be jumping for joy. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Is that his decision based on wanting to piss off the boys or just to go completely out there just to see what no, happens? It, because it would be so much fun. It would. Think about it. Think about it. About, oh, it'd be so much fun. You can just hit every cliche in the book. Yes. You can just <laughs> get these harmonies going, just have fun. Mm. All the fun music. Oh, yeah. They would, like, the guys would be a bit like, really, at the start. But after doing six yeah. months of it, they'd be yeah. um, <laughs> every night, every night, um, six months. <laughs> just a dan like dance routines that like, come on like how good would that be how good would that be <laughs> you could be like bts you know what i mean basically you would become bts but the the, the english version <laughs> that sounds amazing i can't wait for that to happen <laughs> yes. uh, now go back to to mason hill as we are now before then we make the um the synth pop mm. revolution um <laughs> One of the questions we like to ask artists, obviously you've kind of, like you say, the past six months has been a massive change for you, man. You know, you feel mm -hmm. like that was the kind of pivotal point for you and, and the boys in the band. Where, where do you see the band sort of in, in 10 years time? Do you have any personal milestones that you'd love for yourself and the band to reach? You know, if you've got a plan for where you'd like to be at that point? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's, uh, it's, it's it's out there. It's out there. Like, but that's because I have a bigger drive than my head. Do you know what I mean? I am, mm. I just want to do that. I want the band to do so well in ten years' time. 
touch wood i would love the band to be an arena touring band with a uh, maybe number one or number two album awesome mm. at that stage um it's fucking up there and out there but i i just oh, think no, i love it man go, go i think it. the direction we're going is where we 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 will have the ability to hit the masses and that's that's but still keep our sound which has been mm. kind of nice to because we're not we we, we Oh, it's, yeah, it's just the way I just feel like the way it's going it's just whether it works out or not mm. but you know the music's sort of going that way and, and if we just keep doing what we're doing and you know just even work with some of the best sort of writers in the country as well because we're not we're not ego heads or anything like that we just want what's best for the band I feel like mm. if we can get to this stage we can get to that stage but it'll yeah. take time it will take 10 years <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I love the I love that because most of the time when we ask people that question, they're always very much like, yeah, I'm very happy. You know, just do yeah. where I am now. You know, yeah, very, just maybe download. Yeah, maybe download. You know, we'd all get that. So I like the fact <laughs> your bollocks to that. It's like bang. Yeah, we're, <laughs> band. we're going for the number top. one, number two album. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's all about momentum, man. And I think you boys are really riding that at the minute. So if you can, if you can keep on that trajectory, and because you seem so open minded, like you say, to what's best for the band, I think that's the best mindset to try and help it grow and move forward and get better. Mm. Uh, Definitely, and we're hey, God's we're going in the studio in like three weeks to make more music because oh, that's it is. It's all going very rapid. We're just, as you say, there's there's momentum that we've seen in all this fucking charts that we get and analytics and stuff. Is you just like you're looking through it and like right, we got to capitalize on this and, and keep going. So you know, album two is coming. Amazing, mm. can't wait. Um, for folks that want to check the band out, obviously you've just announced that you've uh, replaced Felix and the Drills on the Stone Broken yeah. tour in January, which I'm sure you you and the boys can't wait. Again, riding yeah. that momentum, isn't it? You know, it feels like the natural step from from doing the tour with uh, with Hollistar and Empire. You know, I'm sure you can't you can't wait for that. Is there any other dates, the gigs that you have got planned, as well as the Stone Broken tour, where folks can check you out? Yes, we have Winter Storm Festival in in Scotland that will be fun um, we have oh god you're testing me here we have a stone broken tour in January we are supporting Thunder in Glasgow in yeah. May that will be fun that's in the Armadillo yeah, which is going to be so cool yeah. um, we are doing a bunch of summer festivals that I can't remember oh my god I'm, I'm going right. to get we were, we you're going to get me cancelled no no you're right we we'll just say blanket <laughs> <laughs> no, everywhere yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean I'm, I'm, you boys always seem to be playing most of the kind of rock festivals and stuff you know you're always around on the yeah. circuit so hopefully we'll see you around and, and yeah you again, man. it's been a long time I think the last time we could do it was fucking I think it was in um, Stafford at the um, Stafford, fucking, holy shit! Yeah, what was that? years ago, man. Oh, it, was, it was a right sweat box of a room. I can't. <laughs> the wee tiny one. Yeah, yeah, real t a tiny venue. Real it was, was up packed. one flight of stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, and everyone was banging their head off the. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it I does. What the fuck, it was cool, but yeah, that was. I think that was the last time. Yeah, yeah I yeah. was right next door to the venue that was called Empire. I remember mm -hmm. that because we played that room and then they'd got us back and then it was in this sort of pub. It was like a uh, it was like a wedding venue we were in, not a wedding venue, but like we're all those family parties, a convention <laughs> hall that you can hire out, you know, and get a buffet. And it was like one of those rooms, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's been a long time, man. So hopefully we'll get wow. we'll get the pleasure again. Yeah, that would be amazing. And again, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's yeah, been fun, absolute mm. pleasure. Um, but of course, before we end. We always yeah. uh, we always finish on a bit of a hypothetical one again. Uh, cool. If if you could tour with one band from the past and one band from the present, who would they be? All right. Okay. From the past. Yes. Uh, is it is it what again? I need to turn the business mind off. Is it what would <laughs> suit the band to help the band progress, or would it just be who I like? Well, you love to see yeah, you have twenty dates. You have the TARDIS. You have that time travel device. Yeah, you can go anywhere and uh, gig with anyone. Uh, I mean, it could be a specific time period. Like yeah. it could yeah. be I don't know, Queen of the eighties or right. Queen Pink of the Floyd. 70s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pink Floyd of the 80s, just after the wall came out. That's what I would... It wouldn't be the best for the Pink Floyd fans because it'd be a weird lineup. <laughs> but <laughs> I would be like, holy shit, I get to see that every night. Yeah, that would be 
that would be me. And at present, like, oh man, there's a, there's a few, right? But the top ones would be like Foo Fighters. Yeah. I would fucking die. And Foo Fighters and Alter Bridge <laughs> yes. and Shinedown. Like, mm-hmm. see if I ever support any three of those bands, just know that I will cry once each day. <laughs> One cry per day. Just knowing that as that's happened, I am quite big fans of those. I want to bring me the horizon, like all these sites, holy shit, that would be mm-hmm. that would be fucking amazing. Well, I'm going to pick Foo Fighters out of that, out of that <laughs> collection because um, I've just recently got the Foo's love. I've finally understood yes. the love for Foo Fighters and I think they're the modern classic rock band, you know, kind of. So we've got, we've got Mason Hill, mm-hmm. we've got Foo Fighters and then we've got 80s Pink Floyd. I mean, that's a wild gig. Yeah, I'd be all right. <laughs> I think there's amazing. enough variety there. I think, I think I'd be amazing, yeah. After, yeah. I think it'd be killer, man. Amazing. We'll sort it out. We'll, yeah. and we'll, uh, we'll drop your message and see what we can get on. <laughs> we'll work out. It, it'll be fine. No problem. I'm not, I'm not worried. No. <laughs> thanks ever so much for coming on, man. Really. No, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having me. Thanks for your time. Uh, mm. For those that haven't already, make sure you check out Mason Hill, what you're doing. Hello. Check out the debut album and obviously... Make sure you head out to see them on tour with Stone Broken in January. Yes. All, all them summer festivals um, that we can't remember at this point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rocking the ball. Rocking the oh, ball. Right. Bang. I that's think. the one they're but... not playing. <laughs> I can't remember if that's even been announced yet, so I might have just broke some rules. Oh, oh I mean, if Joe. if you have, I'll I'll put it as breaking news now. Yeah, yeah you may. I may have just, <laughs> just to get someone might trouble. be mad at me now. <laughs> so I, I'll worry. I'll deal with those consequences, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, thanks ever so much, bro. Appreciate no, it. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Take care. Take Very care. cool one. So yes, that was Scott of Mason Hill. Um, I've got the microphone now and got the power. Um, what do you think of that interview? <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Um, it was interesting how he talked about, you know, he wants to be at the top of the game. Yeah, normally when we ask that question, people, as we said in the interview, jokingly, you know, everyone's different. I'd probably answer the same, to be fair. But most people say they're very happy just that, you know, if they could do it and get paid for it. Whereas Scott's like aiming straight for the top, man. And I, I respect that, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's that thing of like, you know, a lot of said, oh, I'll play download or, you know, they play it down a little bit. But I, I like that kind of thing of like, we want to go in and we want to be like, you know, getting like top top album like, like number one number two um you know playing stadiums it's you know i love that ambition that he has um particularly with everything that they've gone through as well you know they they obviously sp- he spoke about the that that tough period about the with the record label um and this long kind of waiting time to you know bring out the debut album and you know to have a, a fan base that sticks around for that long as well as you said just playing those ep tracks over and over and over again but um his fans sticking with it and playing you know um you know pay, paying money to to fund this album it's like an amazing thing yeah i mean i remember i didn't mention it in the interview um but the day before the charts were going to get announced mason were really pushing fans to buy the album you know let's get it in the top 20 and i remember um dropping into one of their live zooms and it was like half 11 at night or something and there's still about 100 people on this live chat and the the positive energy and support around the band was fantastic and i remember saying to our manager Joe, who's, who's obviously you knows mason you know being on the scene with the hot damage like i was like oh this is awesome like i really feel like these boys deserve it you know wouldn't you feel like you the amount of work and effort they the, not only they put into it but the fans put in for it as well as they said themselves they really are a true fan band and i like the fact that it's the album wasn't just for them and its success it's for the fans as well i think that sums up the new wave of classic rock scene in general you know yes it's um you know that that determination and spirit to keep going and um you know building i mean it's it is, it is what you said it's with that community thing but they've kind of built it specifically with their band yeah. Um, which is such a cool thing to have, um, you know. It's, I mean, you, again, they they spoke about you know, do another album straight off the bat. I thought that was very interesting teasing. That was with Scott. We like a little bombshell on the on Beyond the Vibe, don't we? Yes, you know, it's interesting to see where they'll go next. Now, obviously, it was on about the Mason Hill and the community supporting that. But what can people do if they want to support Beyond the Vibe podcast? Well, you know, if you like what we're doing, uh, you can subscribe, of course. Um, you know, that'll help us. Maybe get more mics. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I like, I like the power. <laughs> but yes, um, if you if you like, you subscribe. 
you know, we have a podcast out every every Saturday from 10 a.m. Uh, and if you want to find out what guest we have, um, <laughs> you can uh, follow us on Facebook as well, where we release a teaser trailer every Saturday and um, every uh, Wednesday. Every Wednesday from 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what happens on a Saturday, right? And that on the Saturday is when we release the the full podcast itself. But if that isn't enough, <gasps> <laughs> yes, <laughs> if that isn't enough, <gasps> I know uh, you can uh, you know follow us, and we'll have uh, extra vibes as well, which we release every so often. Uh, that that can be like various different things, like uh, top ten best new vocalists, top ten best new guitarists. It could be anything. And of course, as you're watching this now, we'll have released our first episode of Beyond the Gear. I'm very excited. Mm. That's, that's where we uh, go out and um, meet various different bands and chat all about their gear. Exactly. And if you see me and Rye, the vibe, out on the road, come say hello. And if you want to support the vibe, just click on the little bell and then you'll never miss a video and click on subscribe. And then we'll see you next week. Next week.